The Anycubic Cobra Go is another budget beast or a piece for the heat. We're going to talk about it. So just about a week ago, I picked up this Anycubic Cobra Go at Micro Center. As of the time of filming, it is still on sale at Micro Center for in-store pickup for $129. Browsing around the internet, I'm seeing it anywhere from $149 directly through Anycubic's website to $179 from Amazon. So that puts it squarely in competition with machines like the Ender 3 V2. Now, the Cobra Go does have some features that you won't find on an Ender 3 V2, like automatic bed leveling, which I think is absolutely a fantastic thing to feature, but not a necessity. When you compare it to other budget-friendly machines, you get a really nice PEI spring steel bed sheet, that automatic bed leveling, a color non-touch screen, which a touch screen is not a necessity on any 3D printer, and you get some injection molded plastic parts like the belt tensioners, the Z gantry, those all are going to bring it together as a really nice presentation, but does it hold up and does it print well? Simply put, I think it does. Now, I didn't watch any content or do a whole lot of research on this machine prior to actually purchasing it. I wanted to have a really kind of raw unboxing experience and try to not have any preconceived notions of what to expect before diving in. So last week we did a video on the unboxing uh, with a quick time lapse of the assembly, which took me right around 40, 45 minutes. And it wasn't a terribly complicated build. The instructions were pretty solid. And on the SD card that ships with the printer, there are actually video instructions. Now, a quick side note on that SD card, it was a cheap unbranded micro SD card that has already stopped working. Back to the actual print quality. I've been putting out some pretty good parts over the last week with the Cobra Go, but it hasn't been sunshine and rainbow since I started. My first initial print out of the box was just a 20 by 20 millimeter cube. Basically just kind of checking for print quality, consistency, and dimensional accuracy. And that turned out really solid. We were really close to being dead on the 20 by 20 mark, but the story kind of didn't stop there. It wasn't sunshine and rainbows out of the box. My very next print that I attempted was actually this Cali Dragon. And as you can see, it's uh, kind of hard to tell that it's a Cali Dragon. I was printing this where the face of the dragon would be facing you, and we suffered some pretty major layer shifting in the y-axis. Thinking that maybe it was a slice or the model, I went ahead and sliced this spiral planter. And as you can see, we have a stringy, spaghetti-filled mess. This is why, with a new printer, you shouldn't just press print and walk away. You should sit around and monitor. It started off great, but there was something going on that I was having a hard time diagnosing. I thought maybe it was the slices. I haven't used Kira in a long time, which is the preferred slicer for this printer. There are some pretty solid profiles on there. And then I tried checking the mechanical route. I was adjusting the belt tension, thinking maybe I didn't have my belts tight enough, and then I was also checking my V-wheels, making sure that they weren't too tight or too loose. Eventually, after talking to a couple of friends and doing some additional research, I actually realized that my belt tension was way too high, and that was causing the stepper motor to have all sorts of issues when traveling back and forth and moving the build plate around. So. I backed off the stepper tension, basically the ideal tension for a machine like this from my understanding and what seems to be working well for me is actually at the back of the machine, there is a gap between the extrusion for the Y axis and the stepper motor. And if you pinch on that gap, you should be able to, with moderate ease, make the two pieces of belt touch one another. And mine were so tight that that was not the case at all and I wasn't able to make that work. After I backed the tension off, I started to get prints like this spiral vase, which came out darn near perfect, aside from just some thin wisps of stringing, and then this Cali Dragon, just looking absolutely spectacular. So now, I was kind of reinvigorated with confidence that this machine was going to do really great stuff for me. Now that we have the layer shifting problem underway, it was time to start pumping out some more parts. I was feeling really confident what the machine was capable of, so the next thing that I printed were actually these really cool Raptor Claws. So this model I found on Thingiverse, 
And it was actually a joke in response to a comment on a TikTok where they wanted me to 3D print a raptor call in response to a bird whistle that I made. So trying to be the punny individual that I am, I thought it'd be really fun to make some raptor claws. The reality of the situation was I was having a hard time finding a raptor call print until I stumbled on this one. And this was the first model that I printed on this machine that required any form of supports. And I think overall it turned out really well. This was printed in a Polyterra cotton white PLA, and there's some pretty notable scarring on the underside from the support removal. I kind of hit it with a lighter to clean it up a little bit. It's still not beautiful, but I think it could be sanded into shape. Now I did start to notice on this print that I saw some under extrusion starting to happen, and that is something that I periodically see when I'm using Polyterra, and the spool that I was using wasn't exactly brand new. It's been open for a while. So I kind of ruled it out and just kept on about my day because it really didn't have any major consequence. This piece is for decoration. It doesn't need to be super strong and it's more for the wow factor because it looks really cool. Plus it's an organic model with a little bit of tricky geometry. So I wasn't bent out of shape or heartbroken about it. So following up on my fun Raptor models, I actually went and printed this percussion frog. Now the frog itself I printed on the Anchor Make M5 because I already had the filament loaded up that I wanted to use, but the actual <laughs> stick was printed on the Anycubic. Now this is a long, narrow print. I did print it with a brim, but there were no supports needed. And this is a really good test to check for bed adhesion because it's tall and skinny and is moving around. And these parts are really easy to knock over. Overall, this print came out just beautifully. You can tell that it's a cylinder. There are no signs of under extrusion anywhere. The Z seam is very prominent. Again, I think that's more to do with the filament that I use. This is still that Polyterra. But I thought it would be fun for the model to have a little bit of like a bone type feel like the Raptor claws. And on the percussion frog, it plays. It does what it's supposed to do and it looks great on the model. I was really happy with that. While doing a live stream last week, I wanted something fun to start printing, and I found this really, really rad dragon skull on printables. This one required a ton of support. Kira said that it was going to be around a 17 hour print, and in all reality, it was a lot closer to 22 hours by the time it was all said and done. Overall, there's a little bit of under extrusion on this print. There's some stringing on the undersides and evidence of scarring from the supports. I think that I could do a lot more tuning with this printer and try to get those supports dialed in. Um, I may have some time to kind of double back and work on that, but it's not the end of the world. Again, it's a decorative print. This one's for me. It's going to hang out somewhere out here in the shed. And the effect of how cool the dragon skull is, is not lost at all by the scarring. So, I mean, is it perfect? No. Is it passable? Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the, the thing with a printer like this. Again, I bought it for $129. You're not going to get the same out-of-box results with something like the Anycubic Cobra Go at $129 or normal price in the $200 ballpark that you're going to get on an $800 Anchor Make or $700 Bamboo P1P. It's just not going to happen out of the box. A printer like this is designed for somebody who is maybe shopping for their very first printer and they're operating on a budget. If you're in a position where you can't afford the latest and greatest or you're just not quite sure and you maybe want to dip your toes in, the Cobra Go might be for you. I've been having a lot of fun with the machine. I'm getting passable prints, albeit they're not perfect. With some tuning to the slicer and doing some deep dives, I think I could get it printing really close to perfect, and I'm going to continue to play with this machine and test it out because I'm actually going to be giving this one away. Hey, do you like 3D printers? Do you hate spending money? Do you like things that are free? Well, you're in luck. We are giving away this Anycubic Cobra Go completely free to a lucky subscriber. We did an unboxing, first look, and first print with this machine, and one viewer who comments on that video will win the machine featured in the video completely for free. When our channel hits 1,000 subscribers, we're going to pick one random comment from that video, 
and that person is going to win this machine and it could just be you now to enter all you have to do is visit the video which will be linked in the description below leave a comment letting us know what you're going to make with the machine at this time we are only able to ship within the continental united states now this machine doesn't have a ton of mods that are directly available for it and i think that's okay i've done a little a couple of little things like i printed a new knob for the screen because i like this style and then i printed this extruder indicator and those are just a couple of bits and bobs. Those are things that are fun to have, but absolutely not imperative. I have not made any physical or mechanical changes to this machine aside from those two prints. And they're both of zero consequence. They're just personal flair. Like the knob, it's easier to spin around the screen. And the extruder knob helps when you're feeding filament. Neither of them are necessary, but they're both fairly quick prints and a really good way to dip your toes into kind of tweaking and machine modification. And I realize that's not for everybody. But when it comes to the kind of physical features of the machine, you get a 220 by 220 on X and Y by 250 millimeter on Z build volume. So you're going to be able to print some pretty sizable things. And that's really comparable to something like an Ender 3, Ender 3 S1, Voxelab Aquila. And for a lot of people, that's plenty enough build volume for most things that you're going to want to print. It's not super huge. The actual operation of this machine is incredibly quiet. It's probably the quietest machine that I have at the moment. Silent steppers, the fans are nice and quiet, and the fans are frankly the loudest thing about this machine. Now, Anycubic says, as far as operating temperature goes, that you should keep it at 260 degrees Celsius and below. This machine does have a PTFE lined, not a full metal hot end. So depending on what type of Bowden tube, you're using, you're probably going to want to keep it under 240 degrees because when you get PTFE, the Bowden tube, too hot, it starts to off gas some rather nasty carcinogenic chemicals and you don't want to be breathing that in. So unless you plan on changing out some parts on the machine like putting in an all metal heat break or changing to something like Capricorn tubing, I would predominantly use this machine for filaments like PLA or maybe even some lower printing temperature PET Gs. You'll have great success with both of those, but keep those limitations in mind. You're not going to be printing ABS, ASA, or nylons on a machine like this without making some modifications for print quality and for your personal safety. One kind of drawback that I had when I unboxed this machine was I'm not a super big fan of the extruder. It's not because the extruder is of a poor design, but it's because it's of an older design. When I purchased my Anycubic Viper a couple of years ago, it came with a clone Bontech BMG extruder, which is a dual drive extruder, which helps when it comes to printing flexibles and giving more grip on the filament to really keep that extrusion flowing. This uses an older Mark 8 style extruder. Being said, it is one of the nicer ones that I've seen without having to pay for an upgrade. The injection molding quality is really nice, and I was very happy to see that. But I think that even Though I'm not a super big fan of clones, I think that the clone BMG extruders are cheap enough that it was kind of a silly decision on Anycubic's part not to go with that same clone extruder that they've already been using on other machines. In terms of modability, serviceability, upgradability, this machine does have some cool things that you could do to it. Like if you really wanted to, you could actually upgrade it to have a filament runout sensor. It does not have one by default. And a filament runout sensor is by no means necessary on any printer, but it is kind of a nice peace of mind thing because if it works properly, when the machine runs out of filament, it'll actually pause the print. And the kit is fairly affordable for this machine. It's sub $20 to buy directly through any cubic. So if you want to get your feet wet with some machine modifications, definitely do that. So in conclusion, I suppose the question that might be on your mind is if something happened to this one or following the giveaway, would I buy another Anycubic Cobra Go? And the answer is yes, but. The but being, this machine is budget friendly and beginner friendly. However, at this point in time, kind of based off of what I'm looking for in machines, it doesn't check some of the boxes that I want. It doesn't go super fast, not the end of the world, but it is super quiet. So that's a great trade-off. Faster machines are typically louder machines. And the higher speed that you print at, the more wear and tear that you're going to suffer. So the machine might need servicing more. And this machine is very user serviceable with spare parts being available and they're all fairly common parts. There are also a lot of parts that you could reprint on this machine if any of the injection molded ones broke or you wanted to do some upgrades. 
me personally, I don't think that I would run out to buy another one of these if something happened to it tomorrow, but I would contemplate giving it as a gift to somebody that I care about because right now on sale at $129, if you have a friend, spouse, or kid who's maybe interested in getting into 3D printing, but you don't want to take the leap into a five, six, eight hundred dollar investment, I would say that this machine is great for that. You have a lot of tinkering to do. There's a lot of calibration and tuning that you'll want to do within the slicer. And I think that those are all really good steps. You also get the benefit of having to put a fair amount of the machine together. So as somebody who is mechanically minded, who wants to learn about what the different components are and what they mean, this machine is a little bit more complicated than putting four bolts together and plugging some wires in. I think for anybody with an aptitude for technical ability, this machine is a great choice. Now, if you want something that you can just say, set it and forget it or hit print and walk away out of the box, this is not the machine for you. But it's likely that that machine is not designed for you. I think it's a really solid machine and with some tuning, I think it could be a fantastic machine. I'm gonna to continue to play with it and have fun. And I really hope that whoever wins the giveaway has as much fun with it as I've been having. All right, so there you have it. There's what I think about the Anycubic Cobra Go that I've been printing on nonstop for the last week or so. It's a cool machine, and I think that there is definitely a market of people that it is really well suited for. Just a reminder, we are going to be giving away spools of Polymaker filament every 250 subscribers, and as of the time of recording right now, we're sitting at 233, so make sure you are subscribing and commenting on this video for your chance to win. Thanks.